Hey film friends, I'm Nick Furman, this is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be reviewing Sisu. Now if you're new to the channel, here's our format. For those of you who've been here before and know the deal, please feel free to use the timestamps in the description below. And of course, as always, stick around to the end to get our FOF rating out of five stars. Without further ado, this is Sisu. During the last desperate days of World War II, a solitary prospector crosses paths with Nazis on a scorched earth retreat in northern Finland. When they steal his gold, they quickly discover that they have just tangled with no ordinary miner. Now, no matter what the Nazis throw at him, this one-man death squad will go to outrageous lengths to get his gold back, even if it means killing every last man in his path. Okay, let's start with what I liked about Sisu. Well, this picture just opens up beautifully. Almost immediately, we're treated to some magnificent landscape cinematography. And alongside of this, the film plays with almost 10 minutes of wordless action. It's just a man at his craft digging for gold. Yeah, director Jalmari Hellander borrowed from PTA and there will be blood here. And this one also uses the cool old font title cards. It gives it a bit of a Western flavor, like something that you would see in a Tarantino flick. But I think the real distinctive feature of this picture is just how minimalist all of this is. I mean, where's the background story for this man? Anything beyond perfunctory hints at his past? We don't get them. Instead, in its place, we're told about a legend. A tale of a man who is nearly impossible to kill. We see the scars all over his body to prove it. But he himself never says a word. So Sisu smartly relays story intricacies and little tidbits through other characters who cross his path. They are the exposition dumpers. And even here, it's only very passing mention of a family, heritage, etc. And so we get lines like, do you really believe he's immortal? No, he just refuses to die. Finally, this is filled with great action setups and sequences. Tanks rolling through near post-apocalyptic wastelands, post Blitzkrieg, and a landmine sequence that is dynamite. Another triumphant scene which features all of these women in captivity in a war cart fighting back like something you would see in Fury Road. An underwater fight sequence that defies like every single physical law of logic. There are just so many inventive kills that are visually exhilarating and yet almost make you chuckle. <laughs> it's not constantly kinetic either. There are quieter moments. But when the action erupts, it is absurdly visceral. And each of the different chapterized sequences grant us a new gleeful display of murder. I mean, I guess that's really the thing. I mean, Sisu is pretty content to be like, hey, this is what we are. We're not pretending to be some high art war drama. This is not come and see. Now let's get on with forcing a machete through that man's cranium. All right, let's move on to what I liked a little bit less. So first, I mean, this is probably no big shocker, but everything strains credulity here. Like, you can't just survive a hang, man. Come on. Bones break, and that's really just the tip of the iceberg here. And not since Richard Kimball and The Fugitive have we really seen dudes perform self-surgery with any modicum of success. I guess what I'm saying is the trials and travails this dude makes it through are kind of hysterical. <laughs> and I think the other, perhaps more meaningful dig would just be how thinly plotted this is. There is, in essence, no meaningful character arc for Atami, our beleaguered hero. But again, there are two sides to that coin. Sisu can be seen as sleek and efficient and singular in its focus, a lean, mean action thriller with fantastical elements. Or some could believe it's covering up lack of story with visual gimmicks and silly bloodletting. So which is it? Well, that's up to you, film friends. All right, so let's go on to some of my own original thoughts and the themes of the picture. 
The reason that I'm mostly okay with what we've just discussed is because I think Sisu is attempting to be stylized and artistically glossy with its violence. It's aiming to heighten the hero at its center, and a lot of the shots reflect this. The protagonist, Jorma Tamila, is almost framed like an ancient Greek hero in several key moments. So when you take this high depiction and you just run it through the muck of endless stabbings and beatings and bodies just pulverized, the hope, I think, is that at the very least you get campy fun and at most, maybe even some real stunned laughter and ebullient joy. See, I think the chapterization holds a key to all of this. You pretty much know out of the gate that you're getting something with an exploitation vibe to it, a la some 70s grindhouse films. Sisu is a brutal, sanguinary fantasy. And ultimately, I think it's important to talk for a second about the title term as well. There is no direct translation for the Finnish word Sisu. But this legendary ex-commando embodies what the word means. A white-knuckled form of courage, an unimaginable determination in the face of overwhelming odds. Basically, the guts a person is able to summon when all hope seems lost. Grit, perseverance, never giving up. That's our guy. Well, what can we conclude? You know, I think in the scope of things, this is a small finished film but it's one that needs to be seen by people. A gory grindhouse good time. And I wouldn't be near the first reviewer to say that Sisu kind of answers the question of what would happen if John Wick were to take on the Nazis. In the end, the film is adrenaline-packed inanity that could, when it's all said and done, end up being among the best over-the-top action flicks of the entire summer. Well, there you have it. The only thing left to discuss is our rating for this film. FOF gives Sisu 3.7 out of 5 stars. If you enjoyed this review, please let us know by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. You can also hit that little bell so you get notified each time we release a new video. And we'd love to hear from you. Do you agree with our rating? What was your score? Let us know in the comments below. Also, please don't forget to head on over to FermanOnFilm.com where you can check out our website, written reviews, deep dives, and so much more. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends. Um.